Hello everybody and welcome. My current internet setup consists of two providers. So I have a normal DSL line and I pay some extra for a fixed IP address. The second provider is a local one and the connection comes from an antenna in the roof. And I also pay for an IP address, for a fixed IPv4 address. And they both land on the Cisco IV042 that I really need to change. And goes to this switch that I recently got. and. That just works like my previous switch, it's fine for my needs. I just got it now recently because it has more ports and I paid quite cheap for it. For my next cloud setup, I have all the HTTP and HTTPS incoming traffic being redirected to this uh, old droid board that I have inside this 3D uh, printed case. And from there the traffic goes to my HP micro server generation 8 that has been recently upgraded to a quad core Xeon processor. And that's where I have running Apache. As I just mentioned, I have two providers and the settings are here. The DSL can be controlled here, it's just PPPoE. And the antenna coming from the roof, well, I only get fixed IP configuration from the provider and I entered it here manually. This modem is, I mean, the router is not really doing its job anymore, causing some bottlenecks and it's not as configurable as I would like to, so I plan to replace it with. PFSense box probably. When you go to setup and forwarding, that's where you do the port forwarding for incoming connections. And then I have a laptop that serves as my Civilization 5 server. And you can see here the port ranges go into the IP of the notebook. And for HA proxy, before my next cloud server, I'm only using. ADN 443 and it's configured here. The next step is to configure the firewall. If you just follow the port, connection will fail because this router comes with its firewall totally blocked by default. So again, you have my sieve server from any interface, any source going to the IP of the laptop, and down there we have. HTTPS and HTTP going to the IP of the HA proxy. Further down you can see the all traffic from LAN going anywhere that is allowed, cannot be changed, factory default. And also you have all incoming traffic on both WAN interfaces being blocked and that also cannot be changed. Now I'm logged into my HA proxy box and let's start by reviewing the first line of defense, the IP tables firewall. I intend to start using UFW to configure my firewall, but for now I have this text file with the rules and a script that loads them into IP tables during boot time. That means that for a few seconds nothing is really uh, running, but that's okay for my use and I have another firewall behind it. My first rule allows loopback traffic only if it comes from a loopback interface. So if you're trying to reach any 127.0.0.0 IP and the interface is not the loopback one, it's gonna fail. I've locked myself out of the firewall once or twice. So I started adding this rule that accepts established inbound connections. So if I have an SSH session opened and by any chance I block SSH, that existing connection remains open and then I can come back and just reconfigure it. Very handy. Here I'm allowing all outbound traffic. I'm planning to review this rule because maybe I'm going to start using a web proxy, I don't know. Uh, so, well, for now that's what it is. And also, for example, if this box is compromised, I probably want to limit what people can do with it. For example, I should maybe not allow SSH out of this box uh, or actually allow it to communicate with any other box in my network except the next cloud server and only uh, HTTP, for example. The next rule opens port 80 and 443 for HTTP and HTTPS. Well, that's a basic requirement if you run a web server, so there is no way around it unless you force all your users to use VPN or something like that. The next rule allows access to the HA proxy web console, not a console, but you know, the status page. 
it may look like it's open to the internet, but as you saw in my firewall before, the Cisco firewall, only port 80 and 443 are open, so later on I'm gonna show you how this is working, but still I'm probably going to refine this rule a little bit in the future. The next rule allows port 22 SSH sessions only from my own computer, nowhere else. And also, the destination IP as you can see there, 151, that's the IP of the HA proxy. So, if they take my box somewhere else and the box acquires a different IP address, uh, they're not going to be able to use it anymore because it's going to probably acquire a different IP. And they would need to log in and change the IP, so basically the box is somehow protected from physical attack. Of course, they could take the, mem the storage out and uh, you know, change the configuration and actually plan to encrypt it in the future. But, you know, I'm quite well covered here and I don't think that anyone's breaking in and taking my small, cheap router. Then I'm allowing ping only from my own computer. Well, that's fine as well. Afterwards, I'm logging denied attempts just for tracking purposes. And if I see some IP popping up very often, I have the possibility of uh, blocking it. For example, in my home router, you know, the Cisco router. And then, you know, I spare capacity on these boxes and add the layer of security there. It's just for tracking. Moving down, I'm actually limiting the amount of uh, connections per source, yeah. So, uh, this way I will avoid someone who is, you know, trying to brute force or maybe it helps me a bit against denial of service, probably not, maybe that helps on my provider level, but again, it doesn't hurt, it is there. Everything else is being rejected. A sync flood attack should not work on modern systems, but in any case, I cover myself against it by explicitly adding the IP tables configuration there. What happens is an attacker starts sending sync packets and the server allocates resources to answer to that, but the answer will never come, no uh, acknowledge will come. And I avoid that with this configuration here. Down here I'm making sure that new incoming TCP connections are sync packets, otherwise they are dropped. Then I'm dropping fragmented packets and also dropping Christmas, pa Christmas tree packets. Christmas tree packets are packets that have all options on and depending on how the operating system answers to them, uh, an eventual attacker could figure out what kind of operating system you're running, for example. So this um, makes this kind of operation more difficult. No packets have sequence number zero and no option set. In the past, they could probably bypass firewalls because, you know, firewalls will be expecting certain aspects in a packet and this one just has none. These days, however, I don't think it's really effective, but doesn't hurt to have the option set here and, you know, and protect myself a bit better. So this is how I have IP tables set. I may probably need to re review the sequence of uh, rules and maybe make it a bit of them more granular but so far it's doing a good job and I haven't had incidents in a long time. Exposing your firewall configurations can be a bit silly, but I'm hoping that I can learn from the others and people will leave interesting comments below. So, you know, I can just modify my setup or in any case, so it's not a big deal. Now let's have a look on my HA proxy configuration. I haven't changed much the global settings. The only thing that I have here and it's commented now because my syslog server is down is I'll uh, send the proxy settings to a remote syslog server. I have modified the default bind ciphers list based on what I was reading around online. I'm not sure this is the most current list so I probably need to review it. I've also disabled SSL v3. I also have not touched the global defaults. My first front end is HTTP in, binding on port 80, forwarding the IP address of the clients to the server behind, 
and then down here I have just a standard uh, blacklist. So every single IP or subnet that I add here cannot connect. I don't remember why I added the subnet here, but I think I was getting a lot of scans from it when I saw my logs, and I should probably go through my logs again and expand it. Then I'm setting a table that tracks concurrent connections and HTTP errors. So, you know, if a user is generating too much errors, he's blocked because, you know, a user is just not going to be accessing anything more than 5 or 10 times a second or generating millions of uh, parallel connections. Then I can take measures based on it. I can reject if it's on a blacklist. I can reject if the error passes some certain amount or if the number of connections also goes beyond certain threshold. All my servers are running HTTPS with certs installed, so every time you try to reach one of the pages using HTTP, here I just redirect you to HTTPS. Alright, so the client tried to reach me via HTTP, I send him to HTTPS, and now I'm binding everything that comes on port 443 for it. I'm not letting HAProxy handle the certs, so SSL is not being handled by HAProxy at the moment. So, mode TCP, HAProxy doesn't touch the traffic. I'm gonna review that because I'm having problems with uh, Apache accepting uh, the new IP address from HAProxy, right? So HAProxy gets the traffic and tries to send it um, not from its own IP, but showing the client IT. And it used to work with me, but now it's failing. Uh, I spent some time troubleshooting and I couldn't find a solution. So I may start uh, terminating SSL uh, on HAProxy and send uh, just plain HTTP to my uh, web service. But let's see. I set the forward for option here, but it doesn't work with HTTPS, so it's not doing anything. It's not sending the IP of the client to the web server behind. Then I have again my blacklist, and my stick table is down there. It's not tracking HTTP errors because the traffic is encrypted, but it can store concurrent connections, so it's just doing a partial job here. Then I'm giving HAProxy up to 5 seconds to inspect the cert that's coming and confirm that it's just a usual valid SSL request. Then based on the cert that's coming in, I can send it to the correct server on the backend. Then here, if you go to this URI, you can see the status of HAProxy and how much data is being processed and also the status of the backend service. Then the backend configuration that matters. I'm sending data on mode TCP to the next cloud service behind is Apache. Uh, as I said, forward for is not doing anything. And all the other options is just to ensure that this, the TCP traffic is not modified in a way that would cause Apache to complain that the data is being tampered with. And that's it. With my setup, I can have my uh, next cloud server available on the internet without exposing it there directly and both IP tables and um, HAProxy give me a good layer of security for example by ensuring that the certs are coming correctly, the requests coming correctly before sending the traffic to the server. There are still problems, I still see that sometimes I get people trying to enter passwords there on my web interface and I will see if I can add another layer, for example, a client cert, because you know I know people who have accounts, so perhaps they could have a client cert installed on the browsers. Or, I don't know, some kind of cookie. I will see, I will study that. But for now, it's good enough for me, it's doing the job. Thanks for watching, and speak next time.